thank y'all for tuning back in. It's your boy Pelican Bay K9s giving you that dog news the way I always do. Fair and unbiased, some gonna like it, some ain't. Go ahead and hit them subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. It's totally free, like I always tell you. Go ahead and hit it up. And appreciate the ones that been that hit the subscribe button already. To all my subscribers, we 5,000 and above. We moving on. We're going to try to work our way up to 10. You know what I'm saying? We're going to try to work our way up to 10. I got to put my put my foot down, put my grind down. So um, don't forget to hit that like button before you get up out of here. Don't forget to hit them comments up. Let's boil it out. Today on the Dog News, we're going to touch on a few topics. But first, you know, first, let's talk about feeding raw food. Raw, the raw diet for the pit bull. You know, uh, the basis we're going to go by is that the the DNA of the uh, domesticated dog is basically the same as the DNA for the wolves or any other wild dog out in the wild. You know, for so uh, therefore they should eat you know a similar diet, similar diet to what the wolves eat. You know, dogs are not designed to eat grains and carbohydrates that make up 40% of most commercial dog foods. You know, their bodies just aren't designed for it. Although we feed our dogs dry kibble every single day of the year you know their bodies aren't designed for it their nutritional needs are best met by feeding them fresh raw diet they have evolved to thrive on you know what i'm saying a raw diet provides lots of enzymes and bacteria to promote a healthy immune system when it comes to dogs you know so keep that in mind now if you go to the vet and ask the vet the vet gonna tell you you know kibble is the most the best and the, the most healthiest thing to feed your dog but that's just what they've been taught in school, you know, going to school years and years of that school and, and trying to get your money. They're going to tell you that them commercial dog foods is the best. But the key word that I said a couple couple of sentences ago was fresh raw meat. Fresh raw meat. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you uh, it's fresh when you give it to them. Not old far as, you know, uh, you got to be careful when you freezing and dethawing that meat. Freezing and dethawing it. You just got to be careful with it. And especially with chicken, you know, especially chicken, because you don't want your dog to get salmonella poison or, you know, some other things. And we, you know, we, we do give raw eggs, you know, raw eggs is good for a dog, but you got to be careful with it at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fresh raw eggs, I would say, you know, don't don't give them no, no raw eggs that uh, doesn't been hot or, you know, some other type of thing. And when it comes to vets, uh, recommending certain dog foods, we can't forget the vets are being sponsored, the vets are being paid for, uh, you know, by these commercial dog food companies. So, of course, if you sponsor me, I'm gonna say buy Science Diet, buy Science Diet, buy Science Diet, you know, uh, buy Uva Canova, buy Uva Canova, buy Uva Canova, you know, so that's what the vets are doing. So. Sometimes we get to thinking that the vets know best, but you know, only in certain circumstances. Only in certain circumstances. Certain circumstances. You gotta look at it like this. It's like job security. The vet is not gonna tell you that this food is gonna make your dog overweighted. This food is gonna give your dog health problems in the long run. You know, they're not gonna tell you all that because they want you to come in. They want you to come in and ask why your dog's stomach hurting. Ask why your dog's stool looking like this. Ask why, you know, your dog not as hyperactive as he normally would be or, or normally should be. You know, they want you to come in and ask that because that's the money coming in. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, raw dog food is the best for a dog, but raw dog food must be handled right because, you know, like we all know, uh, cooked bones can kill a dog. You know, so if, it, if you're giving them bones, it's best to give it to them raw. Cooked bones can kill them. If, for those who don't know, they can split off in the dog's stomach line and his intestines turn to little splinters. That cooked bone don't do like a raw bone when it far as breakdown, the breakdown process. You know, and it can split, make splinters going all through the dog intestinal tracts. And you know what kind of damage that can do. So if you are using the, you know, the raw diet, most likely you know what you're doing, but if you're thinking about starting a raw diet, you know, um, just take your time, do some research before you get all, uh, jump off the porch with it, do some research and have at it. 
We gotta know how to understand how to read the labels on the back of the dog food. To understand what each product in that food is giving you and what it's bringing to the table. You know, if meats, meats pretty much, lamb, chicken, beef are pretty much the best uh, meats you can get as far as, you know, uh, at least being human grade or higher. Now you may look on the label and you may see a uh, beef meal. That just means the beef has been processed and all the water has been removed. You might look on the back of the, the, the label and see animal digest or animal byproducts. And that means, you know, that's pretty much found in cheaper food. You know, and it's, and it's not telling you exactly where they're getting the meat source from. It ain't no telling where they're getting the meat from. They can get the uh, uh, different kind of oils, different animal oils. Um, I even seen some where it said they get uh, restaurant grease to add into it, you know. So it's all kind of crazy stuff that they adding in this dog food to make it. Now, them animal companies, they know what it takes to feed a healthy animal, healthy dog. But not necessarily saying they're going to put that in their food. You know, they're going to make sure the food is good enough for your dog not to get sick. And we see they have recalls on that sometimes. They're going to make sure the food is good enough for your dog not to get sick. And, you know, pretty much keep it going. Keep it going. You know, until you start going into the higher grades and the, the more uh, expensive dog food. It's best to stay away from uh, dog food with high corn and wheat. It's best to stay away from it. You know, them the particularly cheap grains and often associated with allergies and yeast infections. That's why you see uh, dog food made for dogs with allergies and stuff. Most of the time, their primary grain is rice. I mean, you got to ask yourself sometimes, would you want to go your whole life and only eat processed, processed food? You know what I'm saying? It's the same way with the dog. Uh, you like to eat different things. You know, the, the food that they have might say it's healthy and it might have some healthy ingredients in it. But at the same time, you don't eat the same thing every single day. You know, we eat different things throughout our life. Some of the things we might eat today might be high on salt. But we might eat something tomorrow that ain't got too much salt in it. Then we might eat something the next day that's high on this. And you know, it's, it's going back and forth, but at the end of the week, it all add up. You know, it all adds up. But when you're eating something that's high salt every single day, something that's high and another level that the dog don't need every single day, you know, that's when it starts becoming a bad thing for the dog. Now, I'm by no way saying uh, feed your dog um, different things once or twice or every three days. No, I ain't saying none of that. I'm just telling you from a dog food perspective because I feed my dog with dry kibble. The fact is, I was feeding them raw kibble one time, which is sometimes raw may be a little cheaper. You know, it depends on how many dogs you got. Raw may be a little bit cheaper to feed your dog. If I'm feeding two or three dogs, I can feed two or three dogs um, chicken leg quarters at a cheaper price than I can go buy uh, you know, a bag of $50, $60 bag of dog food. You know, I can spend that $50 and get enough leg quarters to last, you know, probably longer than that dog food gonna last for, for them uh, dogs. And I know what to get to eating the chicken and, you know, add, you know, a couple more stuff with it, a couple more things with it. Uh, it's gonna be a whole lot healthier for them at the end of the day. It just, the convenience of going to scoop a, 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 a scoop of dog food out of a bag is a whole lot easier than pre preparing a meal every single day. You know, and if it's not prepared the right way every single day, then you you subject to get yourself some type of bacteria that's not healthy for the dog, you know, or some type of illness. So that's where the I guess where the folk rather just go get them a, a, a scoop of dry kibble and don't worry about it. Just think of it, just think of it like store bought commercial dog food. You know. Uh, it's food that's been processed, boiled, all the nutrients, all the enzymes your dog needs has been boiled out and replaced by synthetic cooked nutrients. And, and a lot of that food hasn't been fresh in over months. You know, and you know some of that dog food stay on the shelves for years before somebody come get it. You know, different places, just because it's not on the shelf in your store for years, don't mean it haven't been in the big company sitting on their shelf for years. All right, let's keep that dog news flowing. This next man I'm about to speak about really don't need no introduction. He's known all over the world for the alligator dogs that he bred and competed with in the early 70s. 
with more than 50 years under his belt. This man played a part in a lot of great dogs um, careers as well as great dog men careers. The man I speak about, Mr. Gary Hammonds. When most people think about the Hammonds line, they think about the Rufus dog, you know, but not knowing that the dog he had named Bruno was the cornerstone of his line. You know, Rufus was a reject that was owned by another family who was using him as a family pet, play with the kids, live with the kids, and all that type of stuff. But Rufus was deaf, you know, and being that he was deaf, he got hit by, or uh, likely got hit by a car several times, you know, lo losing his life if he would have got hit. Lightly got hit by a car several times, you know what I'm saying? So what the people did, they knew Mr. Hammonds and they wanted to know, you know, with Mr. Hammonds, did he have a puppy that they can trade um, if he liked Rufus? Did he like him or did he want to take him? Because, you know, he probably can do more with him than they could. So uh, Mr. Hammonds had a puppy, he traded, he got Rufus, you know, and uh, brought Rufus in. And being how much Mr. Uh, Hammonds loved the alligator strain, he had to get him, he had to get him. Now Rufus sired a lot of great dogs that in a lot of people pedigrees these days. A lot of great dogs from back in the days. Um, like I was telling you uh, about Jensen Spike. Um, the Jensen Spike dog, Rufus is his daddy. He was the first dog title with a champion title that wasn't from America in 1981. You know, Rufus was his father. Um, you know, Rufus got a lot of dogs out there you know, that's, like I said, in a lot of people pedigrees today. Now, we're just going to take a few minutes to look at some of the Hammonds dogs, some of the old dogs, uh, look at some of the pedigrees and just look at how they was bred and just, you know, uh, pay tribute to a great dog man who put a lot down in the dog game for us today. All right, this first dog I'm pulling up is Hammonds Andy L. Andy L is a heavy tutu car dog on the top of the fourth. On the bottom side, he's Carver Dogs on top of Bully Son and Eli Jr. Now, next up, we're talking about Hammond's Pig, a.k.a. Snort, or Hammond Snort, a.k.a. Pig, whichever way you, you want to see it. But uh, we're talking about, the, you know, the Snort Dog. You know, and uh, word was from Mr. Hammond's that he wasn't as good as his little mates, for sure. But, you know, he was a good dog. Now, his little mate, uh, Hammond's J.M., he produced one of the greatest dogs, one of the greatest underrated dogs at that, you know, of the 90s, which was Meters Grand Champion Melonhead. Nine-time winner. Nine-time winner. Well, a lot of folks say Melonhead was 16-1. and one. But I guess, you know, you got to go back to the old folks and get the old stories about Melonhead to actually know what, how it went down with Melonhead. Now, what Mr. Hammonds did is he took a puppy off of alligator, bred back to his little mate's sister, Susan Renee. He took a puppy off that, which was named Batima, Hammonds Batima. He bred Batima back to Andy L and got a daughter. Got a daughter and bred her back to uh, Snort Pig. And that's where we come to Hammonds Parkson. Now, when Mr. Hammonds bred his dog, Batima, back to Andy L, you know, Batima, which I, which I just said was a, a, a breeding, a, a pup from a little mate, brother and sister breeding of alligator and alligator, um, little mate's sister. When he bred Batima back to Andy L, he got Andy B. And like I said, man, these are some great looking dogs. Uh, I would love to have one myself, but if I had one, I think I want mine pure. That way I can do my cutting up the way I want to cut it up. And I've heard, you know, these dogs are best when they're crossed out, you know. So, um, you know, I'm not sure because I haven't had any dealings with them. But uh, if I get one, I want to get one pure, pure as I can get it at least, you know what I'm saying, and uh, do my own crossing. Now this next one up is Hammond's Clarice. Great looking dog showing the traditional gray, white mask. I love that mask them dogs have or come with. You know, um, she's coming down off Andy B, bred back to a Rufus alligator dog, which is a whole a pure alligator dog. You know, uh, you can take the pet out. Great looking dog. She's definitely showing traits of the alligator. Oh, the alligator stuff. Look at her. Real good looking dog. Now this next beast of a dog right here is uh, Hammond's Roberto. All right, Roberto is coming down off Andy L on the top. 
bread back to a dog coming down off Carver, Stompanato, Arts, Missy, and Alligator on the bottom side. You know, great looking dog, massive looking dog. This next picture is Mr. Hammonds with one of his favorite dogs from back in the days, uh, the Bruno dog, you know. Um, this next picture right here is uh, Mr. Floyd and uh, Blind Billy. Mr. Floyd and Blind Billy. And finally, we have Mr. Red Wallens with the legendary Bully Son. Shout out to all the brothers and sisters out there that's running that, that Hammonds blood. Got them great dogs out there. Shout out to all y'all brothers and sisters. Once again, shout out to all the dog men from the east to the west, to the north, to the south, you know, doing their thing, uh, keeping it legal, keeping it legit, and having a great time with them dogs out there, man. But listen here, man. One thing I got to say, my dog brothers and sisters, y'all better be careful, man, buying these dogs from and, 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 and commenting and hollering at these dog men that you can't see their face. You can't see who you talk to on these Facebook groups and these YouTubes. You better be careful, man. I'm trying to tell you now, a lot of some fishy shit going on out here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Pelican Bay gonna keep you keep you on point for what I know. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, if a, if a dog man can't show his face, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he he commenting up under your Facebook stuff, or you commenting up under his Facebook stuff, and he trying to say you're a dog. Listen, here, man. Listen, here. you don't know who you buying that dog from. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who you buying that dog from. And then you get up there and comment, and you make the wrong comment on Facebook, right? You don't know who you buying that dog from. You think it's a dog, man. You, you think you know this, or you think you know that. You know what I'm saying? And it's probably a dog, man. It's probably a dog, man. But every dog, man, ain't a good dog, man, to get your dog from these days. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, and like I said, I'm glad I came up around some top hitters in the dog game at a young age, because that teach me uh, to be humble, uh, uh, for one, you know what I'm saying, that teach me to not jock ride, you know what I'm saying, I don't jock ride, if you out there effing up, you know what I'm saying, you effing up, simple as that, you know, I don't care how good your dogs was, you know, at the end of the day, I'm talking about, if you did something in the past, that's different, if you out here in the future doing something, we talking about brothers and sisters that's out here walking this ground today, you put them at jeopardy, nah, we ain't gonna ride with that, we ain't going to ride with that. I don't care what kind of dog you got or what kind of uh, pedigree you got behind your dog or what kind of champion or grand champions you got or how many dogs you sold. You know what I'm saying? End of the day, like I said, I sat at the table with the round, uh, sat at the round table with the Knights. You know what I'm saying? The Knights of the game. It is what it is when, you, when it comes to PBK nines. I'm going to give it to you raw and uncut, fair and unbiased. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, see, you go, you go ahead and comment up under the comments and then... You don't know who you're getting it from. They they ship it to you in the transporter. Ship it to you by a transporter. And when your dog get there, now you got your dog. As soon as your dog arrives and you put it in your hands, the police come and, and read you that warrant. What it's for. Buying a dog when you know it's a fighting dog. Because you know why? You done bought it from the wrong person. <laughs> PBK now is telling you, man. I'm telling you. Them doggers out there, they ain't supposed to be out there. A lot of them doggers, you know, like I said before, there's all kind of doggers in this world. You got the ones who don't care about nobody but themselves. That's all they care about. Then you got the ones who, you know, care about their brother man. You know, and the ones who don't care about nothing but themselves, they don't care about what situations they put you in, uh, what situations they in, they just trying to get their dollar. They don't care about where you get at or how, or how it put you in or what. They just care about their dollar. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm starting to notice some things out there. I'm peeping it out. Like I said, I'm doing my investigative work, you know. And like I say, PBK9 don't 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 uh jock ride. You know what I'm saying? We all can do the same thing at the end of the day. Kick up dust. And out back in the days, I mean, not you know, we all can do the same thing today too as well. You know, some legit stuff. But uh, yeah, man. I'ma keep y'all informed. I'ma keep y'all informed. You can play blind or act like you don't know how to see. Or act like you're stupid. But don't say, don't say PBK nines ain't tell you when your favorite dog man tell off half the dog game. But it is what it is, you know, because there's a lot of people doing uh wicked stuff out there. I'm talking about for the folk who doing legal stuff. You know what I'm saying? A lot of folk getting uh, rim round. Ain't no coincidence. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no coincidence. But it is what it is. 
PBK9 is giving you that dog news. You know where you heard it first. Thank you all to the ones that subscribe to the channel. Thank you all to the ones that have been tuning in, keeping up with your boy. Hit that like button before you get up out of here. Don't forget to hit it. Don't forget to get up in them comments and hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Y'all have a good day. Stay safe out there. Stay legal out there with no pit bulls and enjoy your day. PBK9s, I'm out.